God to lead us that we might speak boldly to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Book of Acts, chapter 3. Going back again, chapter 3 of the book of Acts. I want to look at the first 18 verses, but I want to look at verses 4 through 8. The writer of Acts, who wrote, who wrote the book of Acts? to write a book in the New Testament. Who wrote the most books in the New Testament? Paul, that's right. Apostle Paul wrote the most books in the New Testament. But here comes Luke. It's his account. Being in that group of Paul and Silas and Barnabas and that whole uh, plethora of brethren who went through the three missionary journeys in the first church. Luke says, chapter 4, chapter 3, verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. I want to talk today on the subject, In the Name of Jesus. Simple, simple, simple title, In the Name of Jesus. Today we're going back for just a brief visit in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And we want to rehearse this chapter so that we might be able to just get a glimpse of how, as I term, the first church in Jerusalem, how they operated. That first church in Jerusalem is the model church that all New Testament churches should model themselves and pattern themselves after. We need to ask the Lord to help us to get a proper understanding of how the church should function biblically. This is according to the word of the Lord. You see, church, so many people today have their own ideas about how things should be run in the local church assembly. They have their own preconceived ideas as to how the order should be set in the church. Some folks believe that if things are not running their way, then it just cannot be right. Well, I'm saying about this church, the way you think that the church should operate and function might not be the way and order in which God the Father in heaven has set things according to his purpose. Thusly, we shall make this short journey back to the book of the Acts of the Apostles so that we may be able to have a proper biblical understanding of the church, its function, its foundation, and its mission and purpose for existence. All right, Reagan, hold it down back there, girl. Hey, hold it down. I'm trying to preach, girl. Hold it down. Let's, let's have a review today. <laughs> They're going to beat me up at the church. Y'all ain't talking about her like that. Let's have a brief review. <laughs> and let's talk about these two apostles, namely Peter and John. In the third chapter of the book of Acts, uh, they were able to perform miracles. They preached the gospel. And they walked upright before our God. All right. Here are two mighty men of God doing the will of God. Two men who spoke to a lame man and told him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible declares that this man born lame was unable to get up and walk. Whereas his ankles and and, and, and ankle bone and feet were weak 
Now were they strong. He was a man who was lame from his mother's womb. Whereas he had no faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth before. Now he believed that Christ Jesus can do anything but fail. Right. Church, in the name of Jesus, we also can be made strong spiritually. Yeah. Whereas we were formerly weak and beggarly Christians, mm -hmm. needing the milk of the word of God as babes in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we can now feast on the meat, the word of God, and be made strong. We can be spirit-filled. Bible believing prayer warriors for Christ who will stand up who will stand up and do what God says do regardless of the, what the world might think about you church in the name of Jesus we can ask what we will and the Bible declares that in Jesus name it shall be done am I right about it the Bible says that we have not because we what? Ask now. And when we ask, we ask amiss to consume it upon our flesh. Jesus, God said anything in my name. And in and through the name of Jesus Christ, he says, I will supply all your needs according to his riches. Not according to what you can see. Not according to what you bring to the table. But according to the riches that reign in glory. Are you going to hear me today? Amen. Well, the name of Jesus is the name that Peter and John used to bring miraculous healing Amen. to the lame man. Mm -hmm. He was a man who sat daily, I mean every day, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Mm -hmm. You see, church, Simon Peter had enough sense to recognize that it was not anything that he could do on his own. It was not in any power that he possessed. But it was just in the speaking of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that healing could take place. In verse number 12, Peter told a group of people who gathered at Solomon's porch in awe and wondered at what had just taken place. Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk. In other words, Peter told them that we are not holy enough. That we do not possess enough human power. That we do not have enough human authority to be able to tell a lame man to take up his bed and walk. Right. Are you listening to me today? Yeah, yeah. And then and to tell a man who has been crippled all his life that you can get up and walk. Okay. I don't care how good you are or how much money you got in the bank or how pretty you may think you are. You are nothing without the power of God working on the inside. Can I say it one more time? I don't care how great you may think you are or what position you may possess in the church or how far you may have gone through the halls of academia. But if you don't have Jesus and the Holy Ghost on the inside, then don't waste your breath in trying to get somebody healed because you can't heal nobody because you ain't got no power. But I declare when we get power, the power of God then there's no limit on what God can do. Right. How many have been sick? Right. And if it hadn't been nobody but Jesus, you would have laid there still sick. Right. But somebody prayed a prayer right. and said, in the name of Jesus, and you got some healing. Yeah. Oh, you ain't gonna hear me today. Right. How many was broke and busted like I was and still am right. and don't know which one to see? <laughs> but you still believe that, that, that by Jesus' name yeah. and in his power yeah. that you're gonna move on and be able to take care of your business because God ain't going to leave you. He said, I never leave you and I never forsake you. Can I get a witness today? My God will never turn his back on me. Even when men and women will turn their back and say, I can't do nothing else for you. Don't have no more fun to give you. Ain't nothing left in the bank. Can't give you any more other things. But then when you say no, that's when God says yes. 
can I get a witness? That's when God said, yes, I'm giving to you. All I want you to do is ask. In Jesus' name. He will. Won't he fight your battle? Yes, he will. Won't he do it? Oh, I can, I, can I be a witness today? I know God can restore you. When you thought everything was gone, you have given up. Got ready to throw in the towel. Said I quit. But God says, uh-uh. Ain't time to quit. Pick the towel back up. Turn around and march on. In Jesus' name. Oh, I got some folk that want to praise God today. In the name of Jesus. Ain't no telling what we can do. Verse 12 of Acts chapter 3 says the God of Abraham let me take, let me stop it there. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers remember now, remember now Peter was Jewish and he's talking to Jewish folk. The God of our fathers, he said the God, the, the God of our flesh but now that we've come into Jesus, he's talking to us also now. Because we are sons of God. So now God is the God of our fathers. Yes, yeah, so and we have a right to call on him just like anybody else. Because we've been glorified. And we've been taken into the seed of Abraham. He says, the God of our fathers have glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Yeah, right. Pilate said, which one do you want, Jesus? Or Barabbas? Yeah. They didn't say give us Barabbas. They said give us Jesus. <laughs> we want to crucify that thought. Yeah. Barabbas can go. Yeah. Even though Barabbas was the one that did wrong. Yeah, and Jesus did no wrong. No wrong. But they still said they, we got to hang him. Yeah. But they didn't know what they were doing. They were just doing what God had told them to do. Right. Because it was a prophesy that he had to be hung. And he had to be crucified by his own people. And they had to crucify him not even knowing what they were doing. Peter told them that the same Jesus of Nazareth, whom his brother and the Jews allowed to be crucified by Pilate, is the son of Jehovah God, whom God helped glorify. Peter told them that Jesus is not dead. Can I tell you today? Jesus ain't dead. Might be some dead folk in the church, but Jesus ain't dead. Oh, oh. Can I get a witness? Right. It's tight, but it's right. It might be some dead folk in the church, but Jesus ain't dead. He's still doing great miracles. He's still got power that comes from heaven down. And if you would just look up to heaven sometimes and just say, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If I withdraw thyself from me, where shall I go? Good God Almighty. One told him, whom shall we go to and who can we turn to? Yeah, right. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many people know that Jesus. I want to ask a question. How many people know that Jesus is still alive? How many know he still performs miracles? He performs miracles for the whole world to see. How many still know that Jesus can calm the rising and the raging seas? How many know that Jesus can speak to the winds? And the hurricane winds of life that may rock our boat from time to time. And he can tell that wind, peace, be still. I didn't ask y'all to peace my son. He can say, peace, be still. I'm going to let y'all help me. Go ahead. Peace, say it, sister. You want to have me preach? Peace. Thank you. Be still. Thank you so much. Peace. Be still. I ain't picking you no more. Peace. Be still. He is the same God who advocates on our behalf. Still standing there listening to our prayers, listening to our petitions, hearing our desires. And he stands at the right hand side of God saying, Father, I want you to take care of that thing for me because I shed my blood for them folk. Take care of that petition for me because I'm the one who went to the cross for them. I'm standing at the throne of grace and I want to advocate for my children. That's Jesus. That's why I can say in the name of Jesus. I'm going to call his name every time I get a chance. You might not like Jesus' name, but I'm sorry, man. You're in the wrong place. Because Jesus is his house, his church, 
his piano, yes. his microphone, yes. his Bible, yes. his, his, his everything, oh, right. his chairs, yes. his building, yes. everything yes. belongs to him. Yes. He's just letting us use it for just a little while. Yes. Am I right about it? He's the one that let us yes. use it for just a little while. Right. There's some folk that still think that Jesus is dead, mm -hmm. that he's powerless. And they still got him laying in a tomb in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Talking about he's still on the cross. Mm -hmm. Ain't talking about your crucifix just yet. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I can't but not believe how many people think that if things are not done in their time frame according to their wishes and in their power, mm -hmm. so that they can get glory. Mm -hmm. They say, I ain't worried about what God gets. Mm -hmm. Just let my name be put in lights. Mm -hmm. The Reverend Doctor Summit so <laughs> Trustee so and so. That's just so and so. Ever read about it? Deacon so and so. I'm the one that leads the church out. Without me, the church could not survive. But I'm here to tell you, the many that gone on before you, and many will be after you leave. Come on, about it? So you might well understand it's not yours, it all belongs to God. God is the creator and the maker of all the universe. God formed the moon and he formed the stars. The psalmist declares in Psalm 8, 3, and 4, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy hands, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Can I change it? What is black man that thou art mindful of him. Can I change it one more time? What is white man? That thou art mindful of him. Can I change it one time? What is yellow man or red man or green man? What is woman? That thou art mindful of him. And the son of man that thou visited him. God made the moon and the stars and the skies up above. Brothers and sisters, who are we to tell God what to do? Who are we? To try to boss God around. God, go to the hospital. God, God, go over next door to Sally's house. God, go over there and get me those riches out of that mine over there. You don't tell God what to do. Am I right about it? You just ask God to have your way and to use me and send me over to the hospital. Can I get a witness? Send me to the jail house. Send me to talk to some other folk. God is not our bellboy. And he's not our bellhop. We can tip him. He did a good job. Thank you, Lord. Here's a five dollar bill. No! You got it back, my sister. Huh? We the one, we the one ought to be happy when God tell us what to do. Because God knows the beginning from the end. So many people want to give God instructions on how the universe should run. Want to tell God how the church ought to operate. Right. Want to tell God how the world government should function. Mm -hmm. Because some folks don't believe that God is in full control. Right. He's in control at all times. All right. And in all situations. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the name of Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I declare to you today, church, that when we learn how to let God have his way. And to let Jesus Christ's name be supreme. Things will turn out better yes. for us. How do I know that? Because the word of God says in Romans 8, 8, 28, you know this verse, when the divine inspired apostle Jesus named Paul writes and says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. The writer did not say sometimes. He did not say a few things. He did not write the things that we like or dislike, but he says all things work together for the good. Whether it's bad or whether it's good, it's still working for your good. Can I say that one more time? Can somebody get a smirk on their face? Whether it's bad or whether it's good, it's still working for your good. And that's what we got to understand. That it's not how we feel about it, but it's what God feels about it. It's not how we look at it, but it's how God looks at it. A lot of times we look at things that don't understand why. Why we're doing this and why we're doing that. 
and yet God is still molding you. He's still making you better. He's still perfecting you. So that in the by and by, you'll be in a position where God wants you to be. But sometimes we are out of position. Can I say that one more time? Sometimes we are out of position and don't recognize that we are out of position and think that we're in position and we're just as crooked as the wheels on the wagon that fell off when we were riding. Can I hit a witness? Oh, I'm tight today. Can I say it one more time? Just like the wheels. Sideways on the wagon. Like the riding, spin it, quit it, quit it, quit and fell off. And your wagon didn't go no further. And you sat there crying, please wagon, please go further. And the wagon wouldn't go no further. Can I get a witness? But you just learned that God is the pilot of the ship. And if you let Jesus navigate the course, then when the seas get rough, he'll go around that sea. When the waves get high, he'll tell the waves to calm down. Because he's got power, power, Holy Ghost power, that none of us, <laughs> none of us, could God Almighty can stand close to. Because he's the one. That made everything by himself. God didn't call a committee and say, let us make heaven. He only called the Holy Ghost and Jesus. He didn't call you, your mama, your daddy, or your granddaddy and say, let us come together and let us make the universe. No, he did not. He did not call Job. He did not call Matthew, Mark, or Paul. No, he didn't. He just said, Jesus and the Holy Ghost, let us make man. Can I get a witness today? He did not call you and he doesn't need to call you for anything. You got it backwards. You want to be calling on God and saying, God, because you are mighty, that I know you'll direct me. Lead me and guide me along the way. Then, God, if you lead me, I cannot stray. Because if God be for you, he's more than the world could ever be against you. Can I say that again? Great is he that sent me than he that's in the world. If God be for you, he's more than the world can be against you. When they throw rocks at you, when they talk about you, when they scandalize your name, keep on working for the Lord and watch what happens. And see that if those same ones that throw rocks at you and talk about you, after a while, God will shut their mouths and he'll take their hand down and the rocks will stop coming because you stay on the ship and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep us strong. Because we can't do this thing by ourselves. I'm not going to try to do it by myself. Thank you, somebody, because you can preach and pray. So I got all the authority. She ain't got nothing. Without Jesus. He said, without Jesus, you are nothing. Chapter 3, John and Paul went up together. Peter and Paul, Peter and John went up together. And to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, being about the ninth hour, I'm in verse one, being about the ninth hour, which would be three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, according to U.S. time. Mm -hmm. There would have been at this time prayer meeting going on in the temple every day right. about this time, mm -hmm. 3 p.m., there'd be a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just on Wednesday nights or just on Friday evenings, but there was a prayer meeting going on every day in the Jewish temple. Peter and John, uh, two of Jesus' beloved apostles out of the inner circle disciples, went to the temple. They noticed in verse number two, a certain man, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the temples of the gate, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. This lame fellow laid daily at the gate, hoping to have a coin or two dropped into his cup All right. that he dangled daily begging for arms and he needed these arms to supply his daily sustenance. You see, the man couldn't work. He didn't get welfare. He didn't get food stamps. There was no government assistance. He just said to the lady, I said, take me to the temple and I'll start begging this morning because I, I got to eat. He said, just lay me there. It's going to be somebody that's going to draw a Throw a few coins in my in my in my in my little tin can, and, 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 and I'll just do whatever it is. But I but I can't do nothing for myself because I'm I'm lame and I, and I'm just a beggar, and so I'm 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 really at the mercy of those who see me, 
Because I'm not going to be able to make it on my, my own. He was crippled, as the Bible said, from birth. He was crippled. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know which way to go. But here comes verse 3. Seeing, But him seeing Peter and John. They were about to go into the temple. He asked in arms of the brothers. And I can imagine a lame beggar with weary eyes. Filled with pity. Asking these two temple worshipers for a gift of some sort. Mm -hmm. But look at God handle, look at how God handles the situation mm -hmm. and how God handles the beggar. Instead of God sending two worshipers through the temple doors who would be ready to give the beggar money, God sent two of his mighty disciples to perform the first miracle of the apostolic age. Right. They will perform the first miracle of the new church which has just begun after the day of Pentecost has fully come. What is the parallel lesson to be learned in this lesson? And that is and that is that God may not solve the problem the way you think he will. But God will solve it the way that his divine plan dictates. Y'all know I'm going with this. We may not see things come out the way we planned it but if we just wait on the Lord and be of good courage, God will show us the correct way to do it. Let us sit there for just a few moments. <laughs> we lay out the best plans possible. We try to dot every I and cross every T. But every once in a while something happens to derail our plans. Are you with me today? Amen. Something happens. And God puts his hand in and stirs the pot in the other direction. And we can't understand why this thing did not go as we planned it. Now, but my God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God who was in the burning bush. And told Moses, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Same God. That told Moses, Moses said, I can't talk. I'm going to go to them. He said, you got a brother. Let him talk. Let him be your mouthpiece. Same God. Same God. Same God that when they were thirsty, brought water out of a rock. All he had to do was just speak to the rock. And the water started flowing. Y'all ain't listening to me today. Same God. That told Peter, come in. Come in and walk on water. Come forth. Peter was coming across the water doing a holy dance. And after a while he said, uh oh, this is water. And I'm supposed to be walking on it. And that thing, you know, Jesus said, get up. Oh yeah, little faith. Say, you gotta learn how to follow my instructions. Are you with me? Are you with me? Verse 4, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Peter tells the lame beggar, stop begging for just a few minutes and look on us. Stop looking around the crowd, looking for another beggar, looking for another giver, but just look on us. And verse 5 says, and he gave heed, talk about the beggar, and the beggar listened to them, expecting to receive something of them. The beggar said, here you go, drop some coins in. Please, 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 brothers. You probably didn't know their name. Please, brother, just drop a few coins in my cane. Beggar figures that these two fellas want him to look on them, and they are probably big time givers. They are probably merciful temple worshipers who knew how to take care of a beggar like him. Right. The beggar was expecting something great to happen. Mm -hmm. But look at Peter. Mm -hmm. This is the same Peter same. who denied my Jesus three times yeah. <laughs> before the cock crowed. Mm -hmm. Look at this Peter. The same disciple that walked on water for just a little while mm -hmm. until he took his eyes off Jesus yeah. and began to say, Peter said, Peter said in verse 6, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. 
in the name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk took him by the right hand lifted him up <laughs> the beggar said hold on what are you doing man what are you going to lift me up I can't walk <laughs> lifted him up he said man hold on hold on I'm not quite ready for this lifted him up hold it hold it man I don't know your name lifted him up and the Bible says and immediately his feet and anchor bones receive strength. I can hear them bones cracking together. Huh? They were, they were, they were, they had to break loose so they could be formed together. You heard the bones breaking together. God doing this miracle now. Putting them bones together. He was a man that couldn't walk ever in his life. Now he stands up. And not only stand up, he's leaping. He's leaping up. Not only does he leap up, he starts to walk. And enter into the temple. But not only that, he's leaping and walking, and then he does one other thing. He starts praising God. Oh, y'all don't hear this thing. Some folks get blessed, they forget all about praising God. You say, Thank you for the for the benefits you gave me. Thank you for the gift you gave to me. But you forget to praise God. You forget the one that touched the heart of the one that gave you the gift. When nobody but God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. In the name of Jesus, a lame man who couldn't walk could now walk. Can I, can I bring it home, Mount Zion? In the name of Jesus. Mount Zion, can I speak to you on behalf of heaven? Mount Zion, God's got a church to be built. But it's only going to be built in the name of Jesus. 1608. 1610 East Liberty Street. That's the address. Right now.